Can true perfection ever be achieved in rocket design? Or is it the relentless pursuit of improvement that truly defines success? SpaceX's Starship challenges this very notion with each new iteration becoming bigger, better, and more advanced, not only in raw power, but also in the refined details of how it's built. In fact, when SpaceX completes its Starship version 3, it's expected to be the most advanced and impressive variant in the company's fleet, not only delivering immense power, but also boasting a sleek, futuristic appearance straight out of a sci-fi movie. And one of the key elements contributing to that striking beauty lies in its weld seams. So, what exactly Starship version 3 welding look like? Or could it even reach a point where welding is no longer necessary? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. But first, we need your support. Our next goal is 150,000 subscribers. Let's hit the subscribe button and you won't miss any of our episodes. Of course, we'll strive to improve in every aspect. Thank you very much. The ambition to expand SpaceX's Starship program has existed ever since it was first unveiled as a conceptual design. The second generation Starship has already completed two flights and five prototypes, which makes the upcoming Starship version three the most highly anticipated development right now. Even before discussing its technical aspects, the appearance of Starship version three stands out. It's a highlight even at the conceptual design stage. But why is that? Does visual aesthetics really matter? The answer is yes. Beyond technical reliability, SpaceX places significant emphasis on the visual appeal of the Starship rocket. Setting aside its bullet-like shape, the beauty of these spacecraft can be appreciated through their sleek, polished exterior. Who would have imagined that the gleaming, mirror-like Starship we see today once looked so rough and unfinished? If you're just now learning this, I hope you won't be too disappointed by those early images. That was indeed the very first version of SpaceX's Starship. And compared to how it looks now, the difference is striking. To achieve the smooth, polished surface of today's Starship, and likely an even more refined Starship version 3 in the future, where visible weld lines may completely disappear, SpaceX has had to continuously improve and innovate. Specifically, the company has worked tirelessly to refine and upgrade its welding techniques to assemble the rocket sections. Welding is a critical process for joining metal components in a rocket engine, which must withstand extreme temperatures, pressure, and vibrations. However, this isn't always easy, as it depends on many factors such as the welding method, the skill of the welder, and the unique materials used in rocket construction. In the early stages of SpaceX's ambitious Starship project, welding quickly emerged as a particularly challenging and crucial aspect. Initially, SpaceX had what seemed like a perfect plan to build Starship from carbon fiber composites in California, where most of their workforce was based. Carbon fiber is renowned for its exceptional strength, so the decision appeared logical. However, a sudden change occurred when a stainless steel Starship prototype appeared in Texas. While this move was surprising at first, the choice quickly proved its worth. First, in terms of heat resistance, carbon fiber begins to degrade at 200 degrees Celsius and would require a thick heat shield to withstand the 1,600 degrees Celsius of re-entry temperatures. In contrast, stainless steel naturally offers much higher heat resistance and only needs a thinner heat shield. In terms of cost, stainless steel is about $3 per kilogram compared to $150 per kilogram for carbon fiber. On top of that, Working with steel is far simpler and far more flexible. Producing 9-meter-wide sections from carbon composite would have required an unprecedentedly large autoclave. Interestingly, the idea of a stainless steel rocket isn't entirely new. NASA built the Atlas rocket in the 1960s using ultra-thin stainless steel, so thin, in fact, that it had to be continuously pressurized to prevent collapsing under its own weight. Beyond the challenge of choosing the right material for Starship, SpaceX also struggled with the welding skills and techniques required. The company's first welding team, recruited from a water tower manufacturing company with little experience in aerospace, faced significant difficulties welding the 4.5 millimeter thick 301 stainless steel plates. The early versions of Starship used a welding technique called flux cord arc welding. This method involves running an electric current through a wire, 
creating an arc between the wire and the metal to fuse them together. The molten metal fills in any gaps or imperfections. In flux cord welding, the wire is coated with a combustible material that releases shielding gas to protect the weld from oxygen in the air, which could cause rust. While this method is effective in controlled environments, SpaceX ran into challenges because they were working inside a large tent rather than an actual factory. Many of the welds were done outdoors by relatively inexperienced workers, leading to less than ideal results for Starship's appearance. The welds on the first prototype, known as Mark I, showed signs of corrosion, cracking, and rough edges. To improve them, SpaceX ground the welds down until they were flush with the surface. This wasn't just for aesthetics. It actually made the welds stronger. Sharp edges and small cracks can lead to bigger problems when Starship is pressurized. Smoothing the surface eliminated these issues and reduced the risk of weld failure. Ideally, each weld should be as strong as the surrounding metal. However, Starship's first tests proved this wasn't the case. The Mark I prototype exploded after a horizontal weld failed, causing the bulkhead to separate. To address these challenges, SpaceX made significant improvements with the next prototype, SN1. They used thinner stainless steel sheets for each ring, reducing the amount of welding required. They also switched from 301 stainless steel to 304L, a material much more resistant to corrosion during welding. At this point, they also upgraded to tip-tig welding, which allowed them to have better control over the weld pool. Everyday Astronaut, in a tweet in 2019, asked Elon, Is there any substantial difference in welding, manufacturing techniques between these bulkheads and MK1, MK2, also LOL? And Elon Musk replied, Almost everything is different. These parts are stamped versus manually bump formed and tip tig welded versus flux core. Higher precision, at stronger joints, and 20% mass reduction. Since then, each ring was made from thinner single sheets of stainless steel, which required much less welding. Alongside adopting the tip tag welding method, SpaceX also introduced laser welding for specific parts of the Starship spacecraft. Laser welding, known for its precision and flexibility, offers unique advantages in certain applications, complementing the capabilities of the tip-tig technique. By incorporating laser welding into its welding toolkit, SpaceX further diversified its welding capabilities, allowing the company to tackle a wider range of welding challenges skillfully and effectively. With laser welding, heat is more concentrated and penetrates deeper into the metal, allowing entire ring sections to be welded in a single pass. However, to truly enhance the strength of each weld, an additional process is required. You see, when Starship's stainless steel is manufactured at SpaceX's facility, it undergoes a process known as cold rolling. This involves passing the metal through a series of rollers to compress and stretch the metal's grains. This makes the material harder and stronger. However, during welding, the heat softens the metal in that area again. This is where SpaceX's large peening machines come into play. Peening involves hammering the welds, compressing them until they match the hardness of the surrounding metal. This process also smooths out the weld surfaces and improves their appearance. But will Starship ever achieve a perfectly mirror-like surface? To answer this question, we can look at Chicago's famous sculpture, the bean. Made from multiple stainless steel plates, this structure underwent an eight-month-long polishing process, involving a team of 24 people using a variety of abrasives. To achieve a similar finish on Starship, the entire spacecraft would need to go through a comparable process to remove every visible seam around its welds. Could this be the look of Starship version 3? Let's wait and see. SpaceX also employs another welding method for its Starship and Super Heavy rockets a technique that sets it apart from other companies, called friction stir welding, FSW. FSW is a unique metal joining technique, unlike conventional methods like gas or arc welding, in that it is a solid state welding process and doesn't require any of the materials being joined to be melted. Instead, the metals are softened enough that they can intermingle at the surface with a bit of mechanical assistance. This method results in exceptional mechanical properties such as high fatigue, strength, and hardness, while leaving minimal defects in the welded area. Additionally, it reduces material waste and requires lower surface finish demands. Perhaps one of its most praised benefits is that it produces no harmful gases, making it an environmentally friendly process. 
SpaceX's design engineers have applied FSW to join the internal fuel tanks in their rockets. Critical components for propelling the spacecraft after it reaches space and stabilizing it in orbit. The reasoning behind this application is clear. The fuel tanks of a rocket, this powerful demand, significant structural strength, something traditional liquid state welding methods or non-permanent joints like rivets couldn't reliably provide. The development of welding techniques in SpaceX's Starship project has occurred in parallel with strategic changes in material selection, both having a considerable impact on weld quality and durability. One of the most notable shifts was replacing stainless steel 301 with stainless steel 304L, a decision driven by the pursuit of stronger, more corrosion-resistant welds. 304L stainless steel also holds another advantage over both 301 and standard 304, its low carbon content. When exposed to high temperatures, such as during welding, chromium and carbon can react to form areas susceptible to cracking and corrosion. SpaceX's motivation behind transitioning from 301 to 304, L stainless steel seems to be entirely welding related. 304L far outperforms in corrosion resistance, particularly beneficial in the extreme low temperatures that are an inseparable part of space exploration. In such harsh conditions, 304L stainless steel has demonstrated impressive strength and resilience, significantly outperforming 301. This superior resistance to brittleness and deformation at cryogenic temperatures plays a crucial role in preserving the structural integrity of Starship's welds, protecting against the risk of failure during space missions. SpaceX is currently in the process of producing Starship 5-2, incorporating several design changes while laying the groundwork for the upcoming V-3, a massive version expected to reach a height of 150 meters. In these new iterations, durability remains a top priority. Since Starship is being designed for deeper space missions rather than just achieving orbit like V-1, it will have to endure increasingly harsh conditions. In particular, re-entry procedures will expose the spacecraft to extreme temperatures, demanding stronger designs and materials. After six flights, Starship version 1 has demonstrated steady improvements, especially in handling the challenges of atmospheric re-entry. However, achieving full recovery of the vehicle remains difficult, highlighting the ongoing need for enhancements in manufacturing methods. Encouragingly, the first prototypes of V2 have already shown significant improvements. A side-by-side -side comparison of the nose cones from V1 and V2 reveals a major upgrade. The welds on V2 are nearly invisible, creating the impression of a seamless, unified structure. This not only indicates improved structural strength, but also showcases advances in welding technology. This points to a future where Starship version 3 will almost certainly feature a sleeker, more durable appearance than anything we've seen so far. But durability is only part of the equation. SpaceX is also focusing heavily on reusability, working to ensure their rockets can complete multiple flights. Advanced welding techniques will play a key role in achieving this by reducing structural stress and streamlining refurbishment processes. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.